Hello there, World of Tankers. Welcome to the channel. Hopefully all of you are doing well out there. I'm, of course, your host, Tadrudels Blitzen. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Object 263 in World of Tanks Blitz, the Tier 10 Russian Tank Destroyer. Now, this is a very flexible and as well unflexible vehicle. It's got one of the best guns in the game and definitely the most at Tier 10 with over 3,856 base DPM if you are running Rammer, which is crazy. That means that if you're running Adrenaline with the Rammer on, you're at about 4200 4400 dpm you are able to rip into enemy opponents it not only has a great gun going for it but as well good mobility it goes 55 kilometers per hour forward 20 in reverse a great power to weight ratio mounted with that it's got good mobility and frontally it's got very strong armor in fact you can bounce i would say 25 to 30 percent of the shells you do receive frontally against opponents that don't necessarily know all of the weak spots on this tank but on the contrary, of course, this is a turretless tank destroyer, which means it's very easy to shoot the sides of it, the rear of it, and as well, the frontal armor. It's got the track wheels, and they are very, very weak track wheels. You can easily penetrate right through them. Not only that, but if you are face-hugging this vehicle, not only can you penetrate right through the gun mantlet, through the superstructure, but as well, you can penetrate right on the engine deck. That is where I shoot the 263 pretty much every time. It's an always guaranteed penetration. You're going to overmatch it, and it's pretty dang simple. As well, you've got the massive lower plate, and the mantlet on this vehicle is the big killer I find and something that should be buffed because it's only about 250 millimeters thick which means that most heat shells can get through it now if you wiggle it and you angle it correctly you can get the occasional bounce on it but it's very very tricky because you know most mantlets you can't get through with heat because there's armor behind it but the issue with this mantlet is that there's no armor behind it it's just a pain of you know it's just like a separated piece of armor as you can see there's nothing behind it actually blocking the shell which makes it very very easy to penetrate in the long run now, the enemy team has a Sheridan. They've got two T-54E1s and as well a T-54. And because the 263 is such a mobile tank, I'm thinking, well, hey, I can push it to the medium side here and hopefully help out my mediums, especially because don't you love when your medium decides not to push medium on one of the best maps to push here. So we're going to try and support our teammates. I had the choice of either camping at the back or pushing up aggressive. But judging that my team is probably going to be pushed on this side of the map, as we can see, a T-54 has already been detected. We're going to see what we can do to support them. So I'm going to push as carefully as I can in here. Hopefully that Sheridan does not spot me. I'm going to pull up like this. And there is a T-54E1. One nice shell in. We're going to put on our adrenaline as well to see if we can maybe get one more shell out. Come on. Oh, no. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Come on. There you go. A second nice shell out into the T-54E1. And there's a bounce from the enemy T-54. I didn't think we were actually going to be able to get that shell out on the E1. But you can see where the DPM on this vehicle is great. Like, we were able to rip already into two shells into that T-54. And now we've got the enemy T-54 right here. We're just going to drive, hopefully, over the ridge without being shot. The Sheridan didn't push here. So there's one nice shot. This thing's also decently good at ramming. So there you go. Finishing him off. And we'll move on to our next opponent, which is probably this T-54E1 right off to the side. So this is where this tank is strong, is if you read the lineups correctly, you know where to push your tank, you can do a pretty dang solid job. Now, I don't know where the enemy T-54 will be sitting. In fact, there he is. And fire. There you go. Nice penetration right on him. As you can see, though, the lower plate on this tank, I actually thought I got hit in the mantlet, but it doesn't look like that. Oh, that 183 hit me. I'm very surprised he actually hit me in the first place, to be fair, because, you know, it is a 183. The least accurate tank destroyer, I'd have to say, in the game. So I'm surprised the shell hit me but I'm very also lucky that it did not penetrate. As you can see, it bounced just right off of the superstructure. AP is very hard to get through it, but if you are shooting heat, you know, a Jagdpanzer would have buttered through that armor all day, every day. Now, we are popping up here quite aggressive because, of course, I want to use the good gun this vehicle has to try and rip into the enemy Sheridan, and that's exactly what we're going to try and do here, so let's see if we can get one shell out. There you go. I'm actually going to back up, though. I don't want to be hit necessarily by the fe 2 and 5 b 183 I know that he's back there, which is, uh, you know, a little bit nerve-wracking. It is a 183, the biggest alpha at tier 10. So we're going to try and get a shell into the ST1. There you go. Nice step. We've blocked 1,600 damage now. We've also got the T-5041 pushing on my Conqueror. So let's see. There you go. Nice shot right into the turret of you. And as you can see, this game, we have done a very solid amount. We have helped our team quite a bit with the damage. Unfortunately, my Conqueror completely ate that shell, but we are now going to try and push our way over to the ST1 and see if we can finish him off as well. So this was a great game, of course, for the Object 263. We didn't get out the most damage. You know, 37 
700 isn't a crazy amount, of course, for a tier 10 battle, but it's a pretty solid amount when you think that this was a very, very quick game and that we didn't really have the shots. Um, you know, we only had a couple shells to shoot at the enemy. I kind of expected their mediums to all push medium side, so the fact that they didn't I find very, very weird. But let's see if we can get one connection. There you go. Nice tap into the ST1, and we actually might be able to get one more out just because we've got such a quick reload. Hopefully, though, my teammate doesn't block me. There you go. Second shell in. So we were sitting at 3,700 damage, but because we've got such a ludicrously quick reload, we were not only able to tap one, but two shells into the ST1, bringing our total up to around 4,600 damage in the first game, which is crazy when you think about it. We were able to do a very solid amount of damage, plus the ram on that T-54, 4777 damage in the first game, and it shows you that the Object 263 is such a strong tank if you play it correctly. Now, not every game is daisies and roses, because there's a lot of battles where I can say in this tank, you play it, and you get absolutely smackered. It's quick, which means that if you push it aggressive early, you can fall apart extremely quickly. So my advice would be to stay at the back of the map at the beginning of the game. Unless, you know, you read a lineup like I did there, and I saw that my medium wasn't pushing medium. My 5041 wasn't going there. Well, I knew I had to support my mediums nonetheless, because I wanted to win the medium side. That's one of the most important flanks on the map. So if you can read the lineup and make a guess and, you know, try and support your team, then go on for it. However, I usually like to state the back of the map. In fact, on canal there, I wanted to state the back and I wanted to go up the hill. That way I could have sat there, you know, tried to get covering fire. And in fact, it probably would have worked just as well for me. However, I definitely won the secure medium side in that exact battle. Now, Fort Despair is a weird map because because it's good on the fact that, you know, there's a lot of perches where you can use your tank destroyer. However, on the same side, there's a bunch of issues. And the biggest one is that it's really easy for medium tanks and heavy tanks to get perched in their own little position. So what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to push where this VK90 is most likely going to go. I'm going to push over towards the heavy side here. Because the 263 has one big issue called gun depression. It only has four degrees, which is awful. You know, that's, um, it's possibly the worst, I think it is the worst gun depression at tier 10, which means that you've got to be able to work any position, you know, and you can't work gun depression. So I'm not going to push my tank into a spot where I can't work gun depression. So we're going to back up here. Nice bounce actually from that. Okay. That's a Sheridan, unfortunately there. I'm not actually, oh, right to the lower plate. I see. So whenever I use the Sheridan, it misses, but enemy team, they can use it and every shell will hit. Okay. We're going to back up from the tune 5 We've got a bit of an issue, which is the, um, the enemy teams, of course, got good positioning on us, but uh, hopefully we should be able to get some nice shells out. I'm just kind of holding here against the IS-7 and the 2 and 5B off to the side. I'm not sure exactly what their plans are, but if we play this correctly, we should be able to get some big shells out. I really want this VK-90 to do a good job here. Um, but as well, I kind of want to get shells into the enemy Sheridan and make my way across. It's really, really tricky, though, because I want to get shells into the E3. The E3 just fired, in fact, which is really good for me. I want to get shells into the E3, finish him off, but as well get some nice shots into the Conqueror, which is, of course, the Tier 9 Heavy Tanks. So there's one nice shot into the Conk. The great thing as well about this tank having such a ludicrously quick reload is that we're actually able to get a second shell into the Conqueror. Now, of course, I don't want to be hit by the E3, so there you go. Nice angling from me there. Let's aim in on this Conqueror one more time. What the heck, Wargaming? Okay, I see how it is. Well, I guess we're not going to penetrate that shell, but since we got such a quick reload, easily able to get a shell into you, and now we've got the T110E3 on the side. So, of course, I'm going to try and get not only one shell into the side of the C3, but now we're going to hold his side. Hopefully, the VK90 uses this to his advantage here, because, of course, I can't really do much to him. So, I'm just going to keep him on the side. He's not going to be able to shoot me, and there you go. Nice job for my team finishing him off. So, now I've got the choice of dealing with this IS-7, which, of course, I'm going to try and do. Um, I want to try and squeeze past my leopard here. There you go. Nice job just squeezing past. I don't want to be hit by the IS-7. There you go. Nice bounce, but at the same time, I've got that 2 and 5 be there. This is where problems, again, arise for the 263. My team is falling apart very quickly on this side of the map, and I don't want to deal with the 2 and 5 In fact, let me fix that. I can't deal with the 2 and 5 Um, You know, it's a very deadly tank. It's got really good uh, gun going for it, and what that means is I gotta be very careful on that side. But I can deal with tanks like the Emil over here. So if the enemy Emil 2 decides to poke, which he is, we should be able to get some nice shells out. I'm gonna try and position my tank correctly here. So let's do this, and we should be able to get some nice shells out onto the Emil. Ooh, he did penetrate his back though. Not necessarily what I want, but we're doing our job here. We're trying to, uh, you know, hold. Ooh, we got a little bit stuckered, and my team falling apart very quickly is not necessarily what I want, but at the same time, we're trying to hold our best. So, yeah, this isn't great. This is actually really, really bad, and there's not much I can do about it, to be honest, but we might be able to get one more shell into the Emil. Let's even load a premium just to make sure it pens. We got hit by the pit bull on the side, but... 
I believe that we can take out the Emil. So reload. No. As you can see, he went right through the mantlet. This thing has got an extremely weak mantlet, which makes it very easy to take apart, as I said. So even though we did 3,358 damage, there wasn't anything I could have done to win that game. As you can see, when your team falls apart that quickly, when you have an E5 that only does 330 damage, when your Leopard 1 decides to not push medium and spot for the team and decides to not do damage, there's not much you can do to carry a team like this. But nonetheless, we did a good job. We were able to do 3,300 damage, which is what you try to do in a tank with such high DPM. We weren't really able to maximize the amount of DPM we had there because, as you saw, the enemy team played smart. They poked me how they could. And if our team had been able to hold better, on the other side, we really could have done a strong job, but every now and then you do fall apart very, very quickly. So let me know what you guys think about the 263 in the comments down below. I love this tank. It's got so many weaknesses, but the DPM, the gun, the damage per shot, and the mobility make up for it, in my opinion, so that it can be an extremely strong tank. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. But other than that, hopefully all of you are doing well out there. Stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll be seeing you in the next one.